Thanks very much uh, for holding the hearing, and I thanks for the testimony, some of which was uh, uh, very emotional, and some of which was, um, you know, very important information we need to have to be able to understand how to help our medical device companies uh, deal with uh, what is already a very competitive global marketplace, and uh, clearly the combination of our tax structure that's not working, and then this additional excise tax, uh, uh, which typically is, you know, something you put on things like uh, cigarettes and alcohol and uh, so-called sin taxes, is something that we, we have to deal with. I'm for eliminating it because I see in my home state of Ohio the impact it's had. I've had the opportunity to visit a lot of medical device companies, and I, I plead with them to show me their books, and sometimes they do. And what's happened is two things. One, companies in Ohio have been forced, because of the bottom line, to lay people off. And um, I've looked at some of the, again, specifics of some of these companies and uh, to my colleague from Michigan talking about how well the business is doing in some respects in some areas of the country. I would just tell you it would be doing a whole lot better if you didn't have a tax, not on profits, but on revenues. Uh, that just makes it very difficult to be able to make uh, the U.S. industry uh, competitive. So the second thing that's happening is research is being cut back. And what they tell me is, Rob, what we're going to do next year is change our budget for research because, again, our bottom line isn't as good because of this tax on our revenue, and we don't want to lay people off, so we're going to try not to, but the only way to do that is to cut back on our seed corn, which is our research. So it is happening. Uh, in, in my state of Ohio, there um, are 1,600 bioscience firms, over 400 focused on medical devices and equipment. Uh, they leverage an extensive supply chain of over 2,000 suppliers and service providers. Uh, Mr. Hugo, I wanted to uh, ask you a couple questions if I could quickly. In your testimony, you describe how uh, B. Braun, similar to many companies in Ohio, has seen a decrease in operating margins and that the firm, uh, the benefit from any new increase in consumer demand for your products would be more than offset by the burdens imposed by the medical device and other taxes. Uh, I, I guess what I would say is kind of going to this issue of research, how does the excise tax, in comparison with other taxes, um, affect your firm's incentive to develop new products and do that research that we all want to see happen in order to do, as uh, Mr. Judge uh, told us so poignantly, come up with these, um, ability, these, uh, these new devices to be able to handle some of the toughest diseases? Uh, thank you, Senator. That was a good uh, question. It, it basically is uh, when it is a, a call, um, extra money going away out of our, well, first of all, we balance our checkbook. So when I add up the total budgets for our $1.5 billion company and we recognize that we're going to have to pay over this, you know, three-year period, you know, $33 uh, million to balance our checkbook, we are forced with hard decisions. And that's why you see a lot of firms in Ohio and, and, and everywhere are making those hard decisions. And you will uh, many times cut your clinical trials, cut your research and development, and cut a lot of your future. Why? Because you won't get paid uh, or return those, those monies, won't make a return uh, to pay for those investments until five years, eight years, or 10 years or longer. So it's just basically that simple. We uh, you know, take the checkbook, the cost um, uh, increases to the new tax, so therefore we have to take a cost from other uh, parts of the business, and that's why you see in my t uh, testimony all the cuts that we've made. Thank you. Mr. Farr, you seem to have an interest in answering that question about research, too. I, I, hopefully I did the button right here. Yes, I, yes, I do. Uh, so it's, as Mr. Hagel said, the R&D is um, sometimes, and you use the term seed corn, it's viewed as discretionary, doesn't affect the immediate production of product uh, and operations. And therefore, uh, when you're under pressure like this, it tends to be the first thing that is deferred. It's because it's viewed as discretionary, future standard of living. Um, so uh, the other thing is at why it's a tax on innovation is because it's a dollar one tax. It starts on the first dollar, and many new products lack scale efficiency in their early days. They cost more money, as just my colleague just alluded to, with clinical studies to support that, to, be, to build on the patient advocacy and those sorts of things cost more at the beginning. Uh, and therefore, uh, the, the returns are, are less, and, they're, and it particularly affects new product and new uh, initiatives. So you do less of them. Um, 
and, and that's the simple fact of how an excise tax works. It discourages investment. So, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Donisvich, you talked about your experience. Mr. Judge, you talked about yours. I mean, the, what I'm hearing from the companies in Ohio, and I think what I'm hearing from you all today, is that part of the problem with the device tax um, being on revenue is that not only do you have less research, as you say, things that are, di that are discretionary tend to go first, but also it just takes longer for the products or the technology to get to, to the patient um, so that uh, some of these life-saving devices are not going to be there in a, in, in a timely way. Can the two of you talk a little about that in, in your experience? What, you know, what difference it would have made to you not to have had the devices that you were able to take advantage of and, and any information you have on sort of this time frame of how long it takes to go kind of from the development stage to, uh, to having something be, be available that can be used? I mean, as far as the tax goes, I'm, I'm not familiar with all of that. Yeah. Um, I mean, the insulin pump that I have is made by Tandem, um, and I don't know anything about that. I mean, um, mm -hmm. I'm glad I was able to get the insulin pump, and I think they, what it, I would bring it back to is if I didn't have health insurance, I wouldn't have been able to get it in the first place. Mm -hmm. So what's the point about making something if it's not unaffordable for the consumer? Mm -hmm. So figure out the tax whichever way you want to, just to yeah. please make sure that the these devices are accessible, accessible. and affordable yeah. for us. That's what makes a difference yeah. to me. Mr. Judge, any thoughts on that? Yes, uh, just to piggyback on uh, what you said. Um, without the scans, my doctors and myself would have no idea what's going on inside of me. Um, and as I mentioned to Senator Toomey, I wouldn't be here today if I didn't have these initial scans. And in order for me to combat this, I need scans periodically. And um, you know, without, without the ability and without the new technology, which is you know, the PET scans and the CT scans, because I have cancer in there, but PET scans can only see the, the cancer at a certain size. It, it emits heat. So I, we want to get it as, as early as we can because it's, the, yeah. it's, it, it's more affordable from the and long term, but also from, for my sake, it, it'll save my life. So um, that's basically you know, where I'm at with that. Yeah. Thanks. Well, my, my time's expired. Just say this is, you know, this is an economic issue. It's a tax issue. It's, it's also obviously a, a very personal issue, not just for the two of you, but for our constituents, so many of whom rely on America being at this cutting edge on providing these new innovations and, and devices and technologies. So we hope that the combination coming up with a better solution here, but also with our overall um, climate in this country to continue to take the lead uh, can continue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.